All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series uh, where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show and then it is um, posted on our website in our archives later for you to watch at your convenience. And I will show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of those recordings. Both the live show and the archives are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with uh, colleagues, friends, family, neighbors, anyone you think might have an interest of any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, we do quite a mixture of things here on the show. Our only criteria that it is something to do with libraries. So. Um, what li things libraries are doing, things they think they could be doing, services and products we think may be of use to them. Um, we have uh, presenters come on and demo something sometimes, so what uh, presentations, interviews, book reviews, uh, mini training sessions sometimes, um, anything and everything. Uh, here, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for li all libraries in the state, so you will find things on our show and in our archives for public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, uh, anything that's a library, has a library in it, there's probably something we've done on the show. Uh, this is the 11th year of Encompass Live. Well, the first show was in um, January 2009, so um, we got quite a, quite a group there. Uh, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations on things that the commission is involved in or things that we're doing, uh, and, but we also bring in guest speakers sometimes, and today we have both. Yeah. <laughs> um, all the way over on the end there is Sally Snyder, who is our uh, at, here from the Nebraska Library Commission, the coordinator of our Children's and Young Adult Library Services. Good morning, Sally. Good morning. And then in the middle here is Kathy Schultz, who's from the Golden Sword Award, uh, the chair of the committee chair mm -hmm. of, the, of giving out the award. So um, they are going to tell us this morning all about the Golden Sword Awards, which were announced actually earlier in the year mm -hmm. for this year. Um, but we're going to hear about them and then just how the whole program works. So I will just hand it over to you guys. All right. Thank so you. Take it over. Yeah, you should be able you. to use the keyboard to well, advance this, this We were talking earlier, this is the 39th year that the Golden Sword Wow. award has been presented if uh, that's just amazing to yeah. me. it's been going on that long now and I know that we have um, people who are newer to the library world and maybe not aware of the whole history of the award and how it works and so I'm hoping I can answer questions you have and uh, that you'll free free feel free to send in questions if you have them mm -hmm. the uh, award was initiated by Carla Hawkins Wendelin and Dee Story, who were at the University of Nebraska at the time, and the first award was presented in 1981, but it is currently sponsored by the School Children's and Young People section, the SCIP of Nebraska Library Association. Um, I believe it was turned over to SCIP probably after a couple of years, maybe, as a result. Mm -hmm. um, and it is named for the statue atop the Capitol building. Mm -hmm. um, the goal of the award, Excuse me. Stimulate uh, children's thinking, introduce different types of literature, and encourage independent reading, increase library skills, and foster an appreciation for excellence in writing and illustrating. So we try to find nominees that will appeal to kids um, of all ages, and we know that they don't all like the same thing, so we try to have a variety of books on the nomination list each year. <laughs> and there are three categories now. The picture books are basically aimed at kindergarten through second grade, the chapter books third grade through fifth, and then the Golden Sword novels sixth through eighth or older. These would also appeal to older kids, but we're aiming more at the middle school age. Um, and that would you know, be the highest, the oldest would be the middle right, school. As right, right. But going I, to them. There's, there are books on there that high school kids would enjoy mm -hmm. also. I think uh, high school kids have less time to do independent reading, and the mm -hmm. teachers in the high schools are not necessarily going to have the time to support the award and mm -hmm. promote it in their school or in their classes. So, um, but I want to emphasize that Kids should be, feel free to read whichever level is right for them. You know, if you have, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got frog in my throat. 
if you have um, a fourth grader who reads a second grade level and wants to read the picture books, that is fine. Mm -hmm. We don't really care. Uh, if you have um, a fourth grader who wants to read the novels because they're a more advanced reader, that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. um, before you, you, yeah. I was, maybe I'm jumping ahead. Oh, just, go ahead. I can't remember what's on these slides either. Because initially, <laughs> the, the, the award was only given to one category of book, so to speak. Oh, yeah, we'll get to that. Okay. Yeah, so it's in there later. Right. Sorry. Because, right. Um, Sally does the same thing when um, Sally does her um, uh, review sessions about um, books yeah. for teens and kids and summer reading program that yeah. they're generally categorized by age, but I think she's yes. very makes a very important point that it doesn't have to be limited right. just to them. Let the and kids read what they think they This may be on a slide later, I can't remember, but a few years ago we did change it. It used to be that uh, children were only allowed to vote in one category. But now if they have completed the uh, necessary reading, they could vote in the chapter books and the novels or uh -huh. the picture books and the chapter books. Mm -hmm. um, the first award, as I said, and was... We actually have a comment here from someone which actually relates to what we were just talking about. Oh, good. Get in here. Um, uh, Tammy, who is um, from Genoa, says that in their <coughs> area, um, a fifth grade teacher checked out all 10 picture books. Oh, great. And read them all to her students in, in fifth grade. Yeah, sometimes kids like to see oh, nostalgia back to your past. Yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> really glad to hear that. And they would be very welcome to vote for that level. Mm -hmm. Right. They, yeah. If they were, they had gone through those books, they can, yeah, they can right. put their opinion in. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> They're, uh, and I said they did. They all oh, voted. good, yeah, good. I'm glad. Yeah, in 1981, the first award was Vinicula, which was a, a favorite of mine. And the category was called Intermediate then. We changed the name of the category. And uh, that very first year, there was 4,185 students who voted. That's pretty good for a right. first year. Yeah, it is. And then the uh, first, it was called Primary Award, but now we call it Picture Book. Uh, and that was Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, another <laughs> nice. favorite. The kids pick some good ones, don't they? <laughs> but look how the amount of uh, votes yeah, wow. jumped when you added that second category. And that was just the second year. That was the okay. third, oh, year. third year. For wow. two years, okay. it was just one level. And then the third year, they added the picture books. And then in 1993, they added what they called the Young Adult <laughs> Award. Mm -hmm. And we changed it to Golden Sower Novels. Mm -hmm. uh, but look at the, the number of votes then, too. Oh, wow. Uh, one, one reason we changed the name, I think, of the category, um, young adult, the type of books that are considered young adult now have really changed over the years. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are wonderful books, but they're maybe more appropriate for older high school kids. Awesome. Not something that I would necessarily recommend for a sixth grader. And so we wanted to mm -hmm. kind of eliminate this confusion. The award is basically aimed at middle school students, but that does not mean high school students wouldn't enjoy reading the books, mm -hmm. and they are welcome to read them and vote also. Mm -hmm. um, it's very easy to participate. Any school or library in Nebraska may submit votes, and there is no fee or registration required. Uh, the only thing you need to do is provide copies of the nominees for students to read. And I know a lot of the picture books are read by the, either the teacher or the librarian. And mm -hmm. I think that's why we get the most votes there, because more kids uh, participate then. Yeah. You have to have read or heard uh, at least four nominees from one list. There's ten nominees on each list. Mm -hmm. You have to read at least four. You don't have to read all ten. Some mm -hmm. students enjoy doing that and want to. Um, that would kind of be probably me when I was a kid. <laughs> How do I know this is the best if, if I, I don't read try, the If I don't try them all, all. yeah, absolutely. Right. And as I said, students may vote in more than one category if they do that required reading. If they read four chapter books and four novels, they could vote in both mm -hmm. of those categories. And the votes have to be uh, submitted online by the teacher or librarian by April 15th. Now that should be a very easy date to remember because of mm -hmm. other things that, <laughs> that, that are, are due. Yeah, right. <laughs> April 15th each year. Mm -hmm. And then the winners are announced on our website and by, on our list or by May, on May 1st. When are the nominees announced? Like when do they first know what are going to be the titles? Like oh, we know the ones point. for next year yet? Oh yes, oh, yes. Okay. They are actually, um, 
they are actually posted on our website by mm -hmm. September 1, the year before. Before the actual, so okay, that, so they're up, they're going right, to Right, so okay. that the librarians have a chance to order them copies and, and get them. right at the beginning of the school year to right. get things going with the kids. Right, oh, okay. so then they have a chance to get them ordered, get them on their shelves so they're ready for the following school year. Mm -hmm. So right now, you could go to the Golden Soul website and you would see, which we will later as a matter of fact. Yes, oh, absolutely, good. we can do that. They, yeah. uh, you'll see the nominees for this coming year and by September, yeah, for the 20, for the 2019, 2020 school year. Mm -hmm. And then September one, you will be able to see the list for 2020, 2021. Okay, it's your way ahead, yeah. Right, so when we start talking about years, it gets kind of confusing and, this yeah. year, last year, next year, the year after that. Um, and then the winning authors and illustrators are invited to attend the uh, conference in October to receive their awards. Mm. <coughs> Now, that's why we have a gap between April 15 and May 1, so that we can make sure all the votes are tabulated, mm -hmm. and it gives me a chance to contact the winning authors and mm -hmm. illustrators to make sure they get the word first before oh, sure. it's spread. I think that's courtesy, mm -hmm. polite, Absolutely. and uh, we want them to know, and then hopefully they can let us know right away if they're able to come or not. They can because, plan, yeah. Right. This sounds like a long gap between May 1 and October, but a lot of these authors are very, authors. very busy and they mm -hmm. are scheduled way in advance and they may not be able to attend because of conflicts. Mm -hmm. This year, there are three winners, the picture book winner, uh, Lisa Papp, Ma uh, Madeline Finn, and the library dog, and the chapter book, Lynn Plard, uh, Maxie's Secrets, or What You Can Learn from a Dog. Dogs <laughs> wins a theme here. <laughs> yes, yes. Dogs. Until we get to the Actually, dog. yeah, there's, there's, I don't think there's one. a dog in that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Schusterman wrote Scythe. And uh, we are so excited this year, first time since 2007, that all wow. three of these winners will be coming to La Vista to receive their awards. Yes. It is awesome. That's awesome. Oh, I'm just so over the uh, over the rainbow here. You know, it's just <laughs> it's just exciting. Um, well, you know, before I should I should mention Lisa Papp is originally from Nebraska. She graduated from oh. high school in Omaha. Oh, that's so great. And that's she says, awesome. "Oh, this is exciting, and I'm just going to stay with my relatives while I come. And their parent her parents want to come to the uh, banquet to." See her receive her award. Sure. And the other interesting <laughs> thing is her husband, Robert Papp, already has a Golden Soar Award. He was the illustrator of Titanic Cat that oh. won in 2011. He was not able to come then, so we had a picture of him holding his plaque and grinning. <laughs> and I said, is he coming with you? And she yeah. goes, yes, yes. And then the last email said, well, now it looks like he can't come. So oh, I was looking forward to meeting him. Yeah. Um, but here's the information. I want to be sure everybody gets that. Um, the Golden Sower Gala and Dinner will be Thursday, October 3rd at 6.30 at the La Vista Conference Center there, where the conference is being held. Um, tickets for the gala are $40, which sounds like a lot to me, but uh, that all goes to the hotel to pay for the meal because the hotel meals are expensive. Mm -hmm. And it is not included in the conference registration this it's year. It's a whole separate event. It yep. is a whole separate event. So if you are attending the conference, you must check that box and pay the extra $40 if you want to attend. But you do not need to be registered for the conference in order to attend. So uh, you don't even have to be a librarian. Yeah. Anybody you, anyone is mm -hmm. welcome. But you do have to register and pay for that ticket on the conference website. That's the mm -hmm. only way to get tickets. Um, and I, it's kind of a, if you know the conference website, go to that, that's fine. I created this tiny URL so we could put it on posters and things because it seemed a little easier. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And I want people to be aware that when you go to that, it will take you to the Iowa Library Association waivers. Don't, don't freak out. Don't panic. It's okay because it, this is a joint conference this year mm -hmm. and all the registration is on the Iowa website. Right. So you are going to the Nebraska conference yes. and you will see these Nebraska winners even mm -hmm. though it says Iowa on the and website. And you will see when you go to the website it does say Nebraska slash right. Iowa joint conference right. and everything, but it is being, they're doing all the online hosting. Right. That. 
Um, and so yeah, if you're not registering for the conference, all you do, fill out all the required little boxes, and it'll say work address. You can put in home address if you're yeah. not working. It doesn't matter. And then you just skip any non-required fields and go to the conference registration, and you just check Golden Sore Gala and dinner only. Mm -hmm. And that that's all it takes. I did mine. It worked fine. Yay. Yeah. If you've got two people going, you just have to run through it twice. Oh, each person. I did not see any way that you could register. Like, I need this many tickets. Right. Yeah. Right. Everybody had to go through and put their name in separately. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when I registered, I registered myself, and I registered all three of the authors. So mm -hmm. I was on there a lot. Okay. So <laughs> this might be something that might be funny. Obviously, it's an evening event right. on Thursday. But um, if some of the kids are really excited and want right. to meet the authors or something, exactly. The um, uh, unfortunately, on. I I tried to find out if we could have. Um, seating. I know it's expensive if you want to bring multiple kids or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I tried to arrange for uh, people to come after the dinner just to hear the author speak and sit free yeah. in the back of the room or something like sure, that. And sure. they were not able to do that. Oh. So yeah, we'll see what okay. we can do next year. But this year, unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's forty dollars ahead, and that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, do you know this is a joint conference with uh -huh. Iowa? Do you know, does Iowa have one of these Children's Choice Awards? You know, I would have to go back own? and look. Most they states do, do have do. some, okay. but they're all handled separately and, and have yeah. different rules and requirements. There's not like a national organization for this. Each state has no. just done their own thing. Right. Each, okay. each state, uh, you know, the rules for getting books nominated, the rules for voting, mm -hmm. it's all very differently handled. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping our Iowa friends will come too Absolutely. and, yeah, and sure. get to meet these authors because it's so exciting. They and will that's, get to that's speak to, too. This isn't just um, Nebraska books that the kids choose oh, exactly. from either. This is right. any book out there. Obviously, you can tell from the authors and the literature right. and things. We have other awards here in Nebraska that are specific for Nebraska writers mm -hmm. and, and authors and or Nebraska is the, is publishers. the publishers or the um, location of the book. Right. But this one, it isn't. It's any any book out there. Right, published. right. Yeah. The only requirements, we'll go into this later, but the authors have to be residents in the United States. Uh, but, I mean, that's pretty not bad. Nebraska. Yeah. That's, yeah, that gives them a lot yeah. of leeway. Yeah. And um, the authors will each speak, and then they will be available for um, autographing books mm -hmm. at the end of the uh, evening. Mm -hmm. If you want to bring your own books from home, you may. The Golden cool. Store Committee will also have books available for sale. Mm -hmm. So if you forget your books or want extra copies for Christmas presents or something like I'm that. There. And, oh, they are also uh, they are also going to be uh, that Thursday afternoon at the Bookworm in Omaha oh, signing great. books. Oh, yeah. And so they're excited to have them there. If you now, can't make it in the right. evening, go there instead. Or it's in the uh, Unfortunately, it, I, I believe it's a school day up there. So kids mm -hmm. will be in school. But I think they said they were going to have uh, parents could go in and pre uh, purchase books mm -hmm. and have them autographed that they could pick up then later at the store. For the kids. Oh, yeah. That's right. nice, too. Yeah. That'd be fun. All right. So how do titles get on these nomination lists? Well, Teachers and librarians, students, parents, anyone in Nebraska basically may submit a title that they think should be considered for the nominee list. Um, there, uh, these lists are again provided to. We have a selection committee. We have volunteer readers around the state who try to read as many of these as possible. You may have 45 to 75 books that are suggested. And we try to read as many as possible and narrow it down to the best of the best, you know, the 10 top books. Not 10 dog books, although it looked like, well, <laughs> it kind of looked like dog books. Were that anymore. is not a requirement. Right, 10 dogs. mysteries, 10 <laughs> history books, you know, whatever. We try to get a variety of topics, so there's something for everyone on the list. And fiction and nonfiction? Well, that's the thing. Nonfiction could be nominated, but well, I'll go into that. I think it's on the next slide, okay. maybe. Um, Sorry. Yeah, that, well, that's all right. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, they, uh, we'll get into the criteria. The person nominating the book must have read the book first. Mm -hmm. You must read it and decide, yes, this is outstanding. I think this should be on there. Not just reading the book review in School Every Journal or something like that. Ooh, this sounds good. Or I always like this author. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'll put that on there. And each person may only nominate five titles per list per year. Uh, don't send us uh, a list of your 25 favorite chapter books, you know, whatever. Um, 
we're trying to narrow it down to the cream of the crop. Um, elementary students may nominate titles for those lower two lists, and middle school or junior high students can nominate for the, old, the older list. And students may submit, but they need to go through their teacher or their media specialist <coughs> librarian or parent for them to put it on, just to make sure it, they look at it and say, yeah, this does fit the criteria. Right. And here's the criteria. It, it should exhibit literary and or artistic merit. Um, the eligible titles must be published in the last two years. For example, the ones we are reading now that we will narrow down for the 2020-21 school year have either an 18 or 19 copyright year, okay. 2018 or 2019. Last year or this year? That's uh, it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and they should reflect an equitable consideration for a culturally diverse society. And it must be age appropriate for the readers of that category. So if you're recommending for the novel list, we want something that's age appropriate for junior high, middle school. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean it's not appropriate for older kids to read, but we try to look for that. Uh, Nonfiction titles that are nominated should have narrative and or artistic quality. Something would be suitable for reading aloud sure. to a class. Yeah. It may be a wonderful history book, but, you know, not it necessarily. Reads, it might read very dry. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. It has, has a lot of good information. But, uh, and as far as series, only the first title in the series. Sometimes people want to nominate the second title in the series. But often, that book is not as enjoyable if you haven't already read you the first You don't know what's one. going on. Yeah. Right. You feel like you've been dropped into the middle of the story. And we don't want that. And we also don't want cliffhanger endings, which is mm. often a problem. Uh, these the series, days. yeah. Yeah, it needs to be a self-contained, standalone story, something that a child could read and enjoy all by itself, and never have to read the second book in the series. But if they want to, they can go on. And sometimes they do encourage kids to pick up the next book and yeah. and read on. But they could enjoy that story all by itself without having to go on. You know, if if the person, you know, is like. They're falling and they never hit the bottom, you know, until you read the second book. That's not much fun. Yeah. Uh, and they, I'm afraid that as time has gone on, more and more times, in my experience, the first book of the series is a cliffhanger. Sometimes it's to not, try and get you but right. more often they the are. One. Yeah. Well, more of a cliffhanger than not. And sometimes it's yeah. just uh, a hint to what might be coming next. Yes. Right. And that's, that's okay. Because, yes, mm -hmm. this story had a, a satisfying conclusion. But now there might be something but, else that's going to yeah. happen. Now, if I want to know what happens next to these characters, I could read the next mm -hmm. book. But I could have a very yeah. satisfying experience reading just yeah. one book. The title has to be in print at the time of nomination. And uh, Newberry and Caldecott Award winners are not eligible, but the honor books are. And the authors and illustrators have to be living in the United States at the time the book is nominated. Um, only one title from any book or illustrator can be on a current list. For example, mm -hmm. you have uh, people that are very prolific with picture books, then we can't have two by the same author on that list. Right. Um, now, it has happened in the past. It's not. It's kind of rare where authors write in more than one age bracket. And mm -hmm. I think one year we had an author that had, say, like a chapter book and a novel. Mm. The same year, but those are two different lists. Two different. They're they're going to different <clears throat> mm -hmm. audiences, so we said that's okay. Um, they authors can appear year after year if they keep writing good books that the kids like, but the same title cannot come on the list again. So once it's had yeah, a chance, one chance one yeah, one, one chance, and that's yeah. it. And then of course the copyright year would probably make it ineligible well, too. Eventually, it yeah, will, you know, fall off. Yeah, and then. The winning author or illustrator is excluded from the voting competition the next year. You can't win two years in a row. Right. You, you cannot win two years in a row. Now, sometimes you'll see an author that has a book on the, on the list two years in a row. And if mm -hmm. that happens, and their book should happen to win, say, this year, it's on the nominee list. The kids can read it as one of their four that they need to qualify. They just won't be able to vote for that one. Mm -hmm. um, You've got the same kids reading and voting, and we don't want them to just get on this, you know, train. I, oh, I really like that author, and so we just keep voting yeah. for the same author. We want to give other authors at the beginning, a chance. We want them to expand their right. read, too, read right. that they wouldn't necessarily. Right. Yeah. 
and I think often kids do that. They'll pick up a book and because it's on this list and they want to get there for, and they didn't necessarily know it was something they were going to read, but it surprised them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You never know. Uh, we have to keep in mind when we're putting these books on the list that we want kids books that children will enjoy just for something to pick up from pleasure reading. Not necessarily because it fits the curriculum. You know, this is it's a World War II story, and we're studying World War II, so let's, get let's this put this on there. Or let's have three of them on there. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. And there this April 15th date again. Yeah. The deadline to nominate titles for these reading lists is April 15th. And um, this is how you uh, become a, a volunteer reader or suggest these titles. Um, Shauna Lindner in, at the Carney Public Library as charge of the picture book and chapter book lists. So she would be the one you would send the titles to. Um, you would need to send author, title, copyright date, publisher, ISBN, all this important information. Mm -hmm. And if the author and is living in the United exactly, States. Exactly, which state the author lives <laughs> oh, in. Yeah. Often you could pick that up from the book jacket. Mm -hmm. But if it's not on the jacket, do a little research because she didn't have time to check them all. <laughs> and for the novel list, you would want to send them to Jill Annis. And uh, sh these people are in charge of the volunteer readers also. If you want to be a volunteer reader, it's very easy. Just send your name to them, and they will add you to the list. We do have a Goodreads um, groups for each of these categories, and these are private groups on Goodreads that uh, you have to be invited to join. And it's only our readers that can get in there, make comments on these books. And that is very helpful yeah. because so that's how you can have a little discussion with, with the different exactly. readers and you don't have to have an in-person meeting that people right. have to like travel to or something. Right. Oh, that's cool. And I appreciate reading that. Sometimes I read a book and say, oh, I like that one. And then I read some of the comments and say, oh, I never thought of that. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. yeah, they've got a good point there. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a face-to-face -face meeting to the end of July where we can talk about them, the ones who are able to come. But we also do refer to these comments on Goodreads mm -hmm. saying, look at this. Did you think about this? And so all that comes into play before we set up those final lists. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the in-person meetings, don't you do multiple ones across the state now? Uh, reading? That's the, the, the reading, the picture books. Oh, group. yes. Oh, yes. Two this year. Right. So um, Seward Memorial Library has, um, the, and the Southeast Library System has sponsored one for many years. Mm -hmm. Seward buys all of the picture books uh, and a few short novels that sometimes are on the list. So they have all the books there. Then we just, this is my favorite meeting of the year. <laughs> I tell my supervisor, I have to go to a meeting now <laughs> and sit and read picture books all morning. It's, it's, and that's how right. you can get a hold of all of them right. if you're lucky. Yeah, you so if you're, you're not. Not every library has all the books or you're mm -hmm. not able to access them. And so she'll have them all and we just sit around the uh, table big table and yes. you just pass you read it you pass it to your left pass it to your left and I think there were about 71 books on yes. the list this year and you were able to get all 71 of them read that day if you hadn't read them ahead of time if you hadn't seen them right before, yeah and you can make notes on them and then go home and decide which 10 you liked best and submit your votes and it's it's the quietest group of librarians I've ever seen because <laughs> There might be 20 people in the room, and now there's not you can hear a pin drop. There are a page turn. <laughs> yes, everyone's busy reading. And then this year, um, Shauna sponsored one in Kearney. And yeah, so I was just looking yeah. up to see. Yeah, so being uh, a good Golden Sower committee, committee member, I went to both of them. <laughs> yeah, I had a few books I didn't get to the first time. I believe the one at Seward is usually the last Friday in May, it's the yeah. Friday before uh, Memorial Day. And I think Shauna did hers the first week in June. So, yes. um, yeah, so like, yeah, Golden Sower Reading Day. Right. Yep, over the and years. And so yeah, it was um, a it's a really good way for you to get get access to all those picture books. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you can't read all the chapter books and novels in one morning. No, no. But um, you can sit and talk about them if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's really a wonderful way to access all of those picture books. That's awesome. Yeah. And we do have a few little discussions between like neighbors to say, oh, Ooh. what did you think of that one? Cause yes. You know, and or you'll hear somebody little... burst out laughing, and you go, okay, which one are you <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that one now. Right. Okay, and if anyone 
needs to ask me a question later on, I'll put my email address on there. Uh, feel free to send me an email. I'll try to answer your questions. Um, yeah, it's on the Golden Star website also. So, um, and I just wanted to say that I had not been a member of Goodreads until the Golden Sower different levels went to using Goodreads for discussion. So mm -hmm. I signed up. It's easy. It's quick. It doesn't it's cost free. you any money. That's right. Huh? You just have to remember your dang password. <laughs> <laughs> Is dang okay to say? Oh, oh yes. I don't know. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> but that that has worked really well. And mm -hmm. another thing that it does for you is um, I think there's are there 45 or 50 chapter books yeah and you may not be able to get a hold of them all but also as the time is getting closer like I have to vote by this Saturday mm -hmm. so I've already voted for my picture book ones um, you can look at what chapter books have I not read what are people saying about this one is it something mm -hmm. I think might be a contender that I should read yeah is everyone and, rave, raving about it or mm -hmm. do we have three or four negative comments that thinking well mm -hmm. maybe I could skip that one mm -hmm. maybe I'll read so. this one that, or sometimes there's, I love it, I hate it, I, and please don't say I love it, I hate it. Please yeah. say, this book has these qualities Thank that I like, right. yeah. and these qualities are a problem for me. Right. That's helpful. Right. Some, the of the, some of them yeah. said, these are the pros, these are the cons. Right. And you right. can love it or hate it, but mm -hmm. really, when people Something say that, <laughs> I'm thinking that they're looking at it from their own point of view and not as a child. I, and that's hard mm -hmm. to remember. It is. The other thing I think is very helpful about that Goodread site, uh, oh, years ago, people would submit these titles and submit them and submit them, and you never got the, the reading list oh, yeah. until the spring. And then you had like two or three months to try to get through yeah. all these books. Now, as soon as someone nominates a book and says, I think this should be on the reading list for consideration, mm -hmm. it goes on to that Goodread site. Yeah. So you can start reading them. As soon and as read them all September. winter if you want. In September. They start them up right. the next year's batch right. in September, I think. It's first of right. September. And so you could be reading them all through the year, and mm -hmm. it might help you get through more of them yeah. also. Okay. Oh, there's the Golden Star website. Mm -hmm. uh, it's information for the adults working for the program, not so much for the kids. Right. Mm -hmm. But helpful information that you might need. The Golden Star Award store is there. Uh, where you can purchase oh lovely shirts like I'm yes, wearing. Yes, that is delightful. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you, Sally. And uh, you can purchase uh, the manual, which has activities for all 30 of the nominees each year, things that you could use in your classroom or in your library, um, information about the authors, information, uh, activities, uh, uh, qu discussion questions, battle of the books questions, if you do that in your school, uh, bookmarks, that uh, have been prepared. Sometimes the winning illustrator will send us a little drawing cool. that ties in with their book, and we have bookmarks like a special made. Drawing for it's that. a That's special awesome. bookmark, and uh, Lisa Papp says she's going to do one for us. Yay. So look forward to a new bookmark that has to do with Madeline and the library dog. <laughs> Hopefully we'll have them all printed and ready to go before conference. Um, the virtual museum, unfortunately, is not currently available a number of years ago. Our website crashed, mm. which is really sad, and we yes. have had to recreate everything. And this is a lot of work. Yeah. I don't do it. I just <laughs> help the person who's on charge of it. <laughs> have you done this yet? <laughs> Usually it gets up right away, but this virtual museum, it was pictures and information, uh, like copies of the pictures with their authors standing there holding their plaques, mm -hmm. pictures of them with the student that presented them to it, our uh, uh, letters that they sent thanking the students in Nebraska, uh, wonderful nice. information that we have in our archives that we wanted everybody to be able to see. Mm -hmm. So I am hoping that sometime we'll get that back up again. <laughs> and I guess that's the last slide. Oh, actually, go, if you go back. back is that a link we can click on in here? Uh, Will it try and sync? Oh, looky yes, there. It'll awesome. work. Because what it should do is automatically. That's a good idea. Have us over to, uh, ah, there we go. There it is. Right. Okay. So there. on our homepage, right there. Oh, I have to use that now. You can use the mouse to. Right. Yeah, on our homepage, uh, you will find um, the announcement of the winners there. Um, and if you scroll down, 
did, we have the manual this year for the first time we are offering it available you can order you will be able to order a print copy if that's what you want from our website you will be also be able to order it um, on a USB drive that you can just nice. put on your computer which I think will be helpful for people because a lot of it, we have internet connections for all the books and instead mm -hmm. of having to type those things in, you should be able to just click on them, I would think, or copy nice. and paste at mm -hmm. least. Um, and then here's the information again about the uh, Golden Sword Gala and where to go to register. If you didn't get that written down, go to our website. It's right there. And this was put up a few years ago about children being able to vote in more than one level and, mm -hmm. and adults being limited to five suggestions per year. Um, back up here at the top, you can um, go to our Facebook page. We'll, we'll post announcements, we'll post pictures. Uh, here's a link to the nominees for the coming school year. And if you click here, you can uh, join our mailing list. Now, be assured you're not going to get a lot of spam. <laughs> I'm not real good at sending out messages, you know, like, weekly or anything like that <laughs> but you will get reminders of it's time to vote um, mm. the new list has been posted on our website go check it out um, and November 1st when the voting site opens up hey it's there ready to go if you if your kids have read all the picture books and you want to vote and submit your votes in November you can do that um, things like Ooh, all three winners are coming <laughs> and here's how you can register for that so it, you will get useful information hopefully um, this will give you information about the award uh, the history of the program that we talked about um, all all this information that I just went over is right here on the website uh, the nominees um, you can go here and you can get this. Okay, now we have to get these uh, updated. Oh, yes. um, I thought I was, on the main page. It yeah. did have a link that well, said to this the one, See, this one, I thought she had these updated. Mm, glad I checked. Oh, yeah. yeah, she needs to get these changed. Yeah. So I will send her an email when I get home today, Sally. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> where's the back button? I can't see it. Is uh, it up? Up right there. Okay. Up here at the top? Right behind that speaker. Oh, behind yeah. the speaker. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, we'll get those updated, but you also you can go and you can access the winners and oh you know when we were on the homepage let me go back this one see that one says nice that one yeah. yeah they're there they're right there okay, right so there's but we need yeah. to get those others off now yeah so you that's say no the, thanks on Chrome oh no thanks. Yeah. <laughs> that's, um, that's the problem with websites. You you change it one place and all of a sudden you think, <laughs> oh, I forgot to change it over there. <laughs> so here is a list of all the the nominees for the coming school year. You've got there's two pages for each. It's just a PDF, and they're all there. So, so this is yeah. right now would be the time right. for the schools and libraries to start getting all the well. Pieces actually, they should have them. This, this was posted on our website September 1 last year. Oh, okay. So that everyone could get them purchased. And uh, people said, you know, if you wait to post it later, my school budget has already been oh, spent. Uh, then I have to wait, you know, a long time. So you can plan ahead. Mm -hmm. Now, my favorite PDF is under winners. Oh, yeah. yeah. And go down to PDF past nominees okay. slash winners because yeah. okay. there's our history. Right. As far as nominees. Back to the very first year. Here's the winner. The mm -hmm. honor books are like the runners up. Mm -hmm. And kind of like with the Caldecott and Newberry. Mm -hmm. And here's yeah. every other book that was nominated that year. Nice. Now, this one we've had a problem with. Our uh, oh. I tried, I, I've sent the document to our webmaster and she said Google made some changes because we're on a, it's like a Google uh, website mm -hmm. and she has not been able to get it oh. posted. We're still working on that, but so this okay, will yeah. go all the way up through 18. Eventually, it will have all the 19 okay. books on there too. But um, she's not been able to get it to go on there yet. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Okay. But still, be able to go to the other tab, tab, I think it just well. So there it is. Yeah, yeah it opened a new tab. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, that I think it's very valuable because it's fun to go back and see um, which authors have won before, mm -hmm. which um, you you can 
probably search that document for a keyword and find oh, out, yeah. you know, how many times has this author been nominated? Because uh, we do have authors that have won multiple times and been nominated multiple times. The voting is very important. All voting is done online. And <clears throat> the um, this will not be live until November 1. But then you'll be able to vote anytime between November 1 and April 15. Perfect. I have to tell you, most of the votes come in between April 10 and April 15. But <laughs> sure, that's, believe it. that's okay, uh -huh. you know. That's okay. Um, and this tells you, again, the criteria who can vote. And, uh, yeah, they cannot vote for a book that they haven't read or heard just because their friends said they liked it. Uh -huh. um, it's up to the teacher and the librarian to keep track of which ones the kids have read. I worked in a public library. I, I just told the kids, it's not, you're on honor system. Yeah. If you vote at your school, be, yeah. you can't come in here and vote also. Uh, and <clears throat> but but you know, homeschoolers are very welcome to I come on to bring that up. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm hoping that public libraries will make it available for their homeschool families to come in and read the books at the library or check them out there and read them and vote there. Um and, and here again. Readers select the category that is best for them, regardless of grade level. And the voting deadlines. And this is for the teachers and librarians that are submitting the votes. So it's it's very easy to do. You don't even have to put a stamp on it. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, USPS. be very careful. Sometimes, every once in a while, we have somebody say, okay, this is the one that vote in the, the, the book that won in my school and that's the only votes they submit no 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 we want the votes for every single book you know you fill in a zero if nobody voted for it you put in one if one student voted for it because we you tabulate five, all the five students voted right for it. Okay. we tabulate yeah, it's all not what is your whole school like it's each individual child gets to have a vote right to this right yeah good yeah and here, if you've got questions, you can go here and get some of them answers. If it's still not clear, send me an email. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the link to the uh, store. And here's some of the items we have for sale. Yeah, there's the, some great things. Right. The, the new manual will be posted shortly. I believe the price is going to have to go up because of postage and mm -hmm. printing costs. But it will also be available this year if you want to purchase it on a USB. Um, you can purchase stickers to put on the books to mark them in your library. Um, I always like to put the Golden Sower Triangle sticker on the cover so when kids picked up a book, mm -hmm. they knew that that was the winner. And I also used a rubber stamp in my books at the library. I stamped them inside the back cover and put what year they were nominated. So um, even if they didn't win, the kids could pick it up. Or if they won, they can pick it up and figure out which year it was, too. Yeah. Uh, there's a little pin of the sore they can order. Um, there's some other items uh, that they, if you want prizes or something for your school. Oh, we have a new um, mug with Ooh. the Peter Reynolds uh, little sewer design on it. Uh, just a number. Here's some of the bookmarks. Uh, there's lanyards. Pencils, so, yeah. yeah. And creepy carrots. That's a good one. <laughs> yes. And even monsters need haircuts. That was a fun one. And here's a golden sore uh, tote bag. It's really handy. And there's the t-shirt. There's the t -shirt. Shirt right. that, she, that right. Kathy's wearing. Now yeah. you can't really see it on her in well, the camera view, yeah. but you can see the it there. The polo shirt and there, the it is kind of a turquoise color. Mm -hmm. I don't know. On the, maybe it shows up better on the website. But you can it shows order. shows up nice on the camera view. Oh, good. You can see there, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can order the, the ladies' v-neck polo. Um, you can order t-shirts. And it has this design on the front. And you, I think... If you wanted kids sizes, you contact um, Artis down here. Artis Moody is in charge of our store. And if you send her uh, a message, there's an there's order form here. If you click there, it takes you to the order form and her email. I, I think, yeah, her email is here. Her address is there. Tells you how to make payments. You can use credit cards and debit cards. But you do have to pay the extra charge because we have to pay a charge to take those cards. Mm -hmm. 
but postage and handling costs are included uh, in the items when you purchase them. Oh, there's a lovely pen there too now. That's something Ooh, that's fairly new. And we forgot Brock. There's another bookmark. <coughs> yeah. So, you know, all these things are available. Then if I go back up to the top, um, contact, uh, oops, contact us. This tells you some of the committee members and their responsibilities. So my email address is right there if people need to contact me. Um, Artist Moody with the, the store. Um, Dana Fontaine is the manual editor. If you have questions about that, if you'd like to volunteer to get to, to do the activities and things for one of the books, um, if you prepare pages for the manual, you can get a free copy of the manual. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not, you know, it's like not a, a lot of, I mean, you're not going to get paid by the hour or anything, but it's nice to get a free manual. And um, so these are the different responsibilities here. Also, you've got uh, the contact information for Shauna and Jill, who are in charge of the readers and the nominee lists. Uh, our webmaster. Um, oh, I do the Facebook. That's why you probably won't see a lot of Facebook posts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not real good at that. Marsha Bradbury here in Lincoln is our historian, and she's done a wonderful job keeping our archives, which are stored here at the Library Commission, Sally. Yes, that right? is true. Yes. They are still there. We have a nice, safe place for those. We do purchase a copy of each of the winning books and keep them here also. So we have that in our archives. You can see mm -hmm. the um, all the books that have won in the past. Anything else that we've forgotten? <clears throat> oh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have any questions, type into the questions section sure. of your GoToWebinar we'll go interface. Questions, page. comments, thoughts. Right. Um, if you have a microphone, you can use that. Uh, here let again, us know if you need yeah. to know. We encourage know you to sign up for the, uh, the mailing list if you want reminder emails about, uh, oh, so, you know, if you've read any good books, Suggest them Please. to Shauna or Jill for the reading list. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to be a reader, this is, you know, once you're, once they have your name and contact information, they will send you the reminders too. I need to have mm -hmm. this by a certain date. Or this is when the readers are going to get together. Uh, they will send you an invitation to the Goodreads site, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. So we do have a question, yes. and um, it's a good question. Are adults able to vote, or is it just children? Oh, this is a Children's Choice Award. Only right. children are allowed to vote. No, adults pick the nominees, though. Right. And then it's passed right. on to the children to vote exactly. for the winners. Right. We try to pick 10 books for each list that the kids will enjoy reading, mm -hmm. just to encourage them to read for fun. And, mm -hmm. and you know, not all kids think that. Usually reading is associated with schoolwork. We want them to be able to pick up a book and read it for enjoyment. Mm -hmm. And so we and try kids, to pick books that they will like. But yes, the book, kids, the adults pick the nominees. Right. The students and the children do the voting. Do the voting. Um, kids could suggest titles, though, too, right? Oh, I mean, sure. You could, that could be something yes. you have as part of your they, program related to this, is to have your, your students or the kids in your library Suggest the new titles exactly in the, the year coming up of right of, and yeah. then they suggest it to your librarian mm -hmm. And the librarian can make sure it fits all those criteria the right copyright right. date the author lives in the US and mm -hmm. the Librarian can submit the title for them, mm -hmm. and I think that's a wonderful way to do it um, I'm hoping parents will read the books with the kids at home I'm hoping if the teachers have time read them in the classroom or in the library. Yeah, it's a uh, you know, with all the things going on in school, I, I know I've heard from um, other elementary teachers that were reading chapter books aloud, you know, like a chapter a day during a certain time, mm -hmm. that they say, oh, we just don't have time for that anymore, which mm -hmm. is sad. Yeah. Because reading is so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of answered this question already, but I just want to kind of reemphasize it because um, I had a couple of uh, public librarians asking me about offering voting at the library yes the public library and I told them as you have verified that they need to see if the school is doing a vote because many yeah. many schools do not every mm -hmm. single one but many many and then have the kids say are you voting at school right and then we talked mm -hmm. about the homeschool groups mm -hmm. because they lots of public libraries do have 
homeschool right. families mm-hmm. coming to the library or coming as a group to have a homeschool day where they give presentations and that. Mm-hmm. And that, that could be the site where those um, people mm-hmm. vote if you mm-hmm. want. Right. Want well, and I think if you have uh, homeschoolers using your library, it would be very helpful. Encourage them. Show them where the, uh, the Golden Source are. It, it, maybe have a manual on your shelf that they could mm-hmm. check out and they could, could use for the activities also. Mm-hmm. Um, I always had a library, uh, a library copy of the manual that, that anyone, teacher, homeschooler, could check out and, and use the activities. So, uh, you know, make it as easy as possible. I, mm-hmm. I found it worked well usually to put it, I just had the ballots available. They had to ask for them at the desk. But I just had the, the rules printed there and said, you've already voted at school, please don't vote here. Mm-hmm. And this is the honor system. Yeah. You have to have read at least four of these books. And, but, you know, make it as easy as possible and, yeah. and put the responsibility on the student. Yeah. I think, I think uh, that's important for kids to yeah. learn that type it of is. thing, too. Mm-hmm. Um, it might be good also from either side of the school or the library to work with your, if you're at the school, contact your public library sure. and see what they're doing. And the other way around, if you're at the public library, don't just depend on asking the kids, is the school doing this? Just reach out to your school mm-hmm. and say, what's up? With, what are you doing with Golden Solar? What can we do together? Can we cross promote this or something? Or at least so right. we know what's going on. We know to ask the kids, did you already do the school vote? Because we know they're doing it there. Yeah. <laughs> um, or the other way around, you know, work together on, on this, definitely. Another thing I wanted to mention, you had said that the manual this year for the first time is available via Teachers Pay Teachers, but one of the things we did, and I haven't looked to verify this, but on that site you could order just one group of the, if you only want the picture book right. list and the information that goes with them, you could buy just that section rather than the oh, whole manual. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. Oh, yes. Well, interesting. It's up to you. What, right. What you the want. entire manual includes all three levels, right. activities and everything for all the books. Um, you can buy on um, Teachers Pay Teachers just the picture book section, just the chapter book section, just the novel section, or you can buy just the activities for one book because oh, we thought yes, we've opened this up right. so people anywhere yes. in the country, if they're interested, I'm going to be doing this book. Sure. I don't want your whole manual, but I want the I activities want to, for this book. Yeah. Well, that's uh, nice. So you can pick yeah. and choose how much you want. If right. you go down to the website there, yeah. Right. And then the the battle of the books questions for the picture books will be in that section. Right. The battle of the books questions for the chapter books will be in that section. I'm glad you mentioned that because I forgot to say that. I think that would be very handy for some people in Nebraska and also for, like you sure. said, people across the country. And that one, then the the whole all the manual and all that stuff is strictly just online. It's not like they send you a paper. No, it's no. all just an online. Yeah, it is. It, it is. I just download. Them. Okay. If we're all new to this this year, yeah. <laughs> so we're hoping it'll but work really well. I'm yeah. thinking that's how it works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just it's a download, um, and it would be if you ordered the same manual from Teachers Pay Teachers, you would get the same ones you get from the USB store from our store. Mm-hmm. But I'm hoping if you really want the whole manual, order from our store because we'll make a little bit more money on it that way. Um, teachers Pay Teachers keeps a cut, mm, of course. So we don't yeah. get the entire amount. So we'll see. <laughs> that's a good point too. Yeah. yeah. But we thought by opening it's it up nice that to have way, those options. Yeah. Those but we could easy. make it available for somebody that lived in Texas mm-hmm. or Florida or wherever. If they wanted the activities that had already been prepared for that book, they could purchase mm-hmm. just that that one piece. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. All right. Any other last minute questions? Questions, well, comments, for, thoughts? Oh yeah. Sorry. For those who are attending the conference this fall, and um, please look for the table of Golden Sower. Thanks to the Nebraska Library Association yes. for Golden Sower having a table at the conference. You can buy right. the items that we showed you that are in the store. Mm-hmm. Usually we'll have a collection yeah. of those for sale at conference as well. And I'll have to tell you, usually she has the prices a little lower because we're not having to pay the postage. There's no postage. Right. Shipping. Yeah. So you'll get a deal if you buy it and carry it home with you. So um, look in the exhibits area for the Golden Sower right. table if you want to stock up on all that, of your materials. This year, in the past, the uh, conference has always offered us a free booth. Mm-hmm. And this year, there were no free booths for anyone. Uh-huh. But the Nebraska Library Association was very generous. They said, 
we think it's important for Golden Silver to have a presence there. Sure. So we will be there all day Thursday uh, selling these items, and then we will move to the banquet room, wherever that is, and mm -hmm. you can buy your copies of the books for autographing or whatever you want. I'm going to be there early for my books for autographing. <laughs> I'm going to exactly. buy all my books right away. Right. Oh. I wouldn't wait till the last minute because Sally will have bought them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm looking forward to having all three yes, authors here. I, you know, I'll probably have my fingers crossed until October 3rd, hoping nobody gets sick. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's no delay, so travel issues or anything like that. Oh, we exactly. Had, there's been years before, because right. in October, I know right. I'm going to say, though, it can snow. It has before. There was, there was one, so. uh, one year the illustrator didn't make it because he was having to fly through Denver, and there was a blizzard there's going on. There, so, yeah. Yeah, he said, I... They said I'd probably make it, but I chickened out. <laughs> and and then one year, yeah. I think the author's um, husband got sick and was in the uh -huh. hospital. Well, of course, you know, yes. yeah, that happens. Don't expect them yeah. to come. Things right, and we realize these things happen. Yeah. So think good we thoughts just for them all. Though, hold so our breath. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's going to be great. Right. Yeah. Awesome. All right, well, it doesn't look like anybody's got anything desperately need to ask you guys right now. Um, that's fine. Um, as you saw, all of the emails that you might need to get in touch with anybody is on the website. Right. So um, if you're interested, if you haven't been doing Golden Star before, or you want now, to I should mention, if you look up at the top, it says the address says sites.google.com because we mm -hmm. are a Google site now. But you type in goldensower.com, that's where you go. It'll go there. Right. Well. Yeah. Right. You don't have that. to remember yeah. all of that. No. <laughs> they have nice. Just remember goldensower.com. Yeah. Excuse me, goldensword.org. Oh, I have to ask that. Yes. Org? Org. Oh, Dora, excuse it's me. An org, not no, we yes. would have gotten close. <laughs> not, no, but I don't org. know where you would have gone, but yeah, yeah, it wouldn't have been there. Scary. Goldensword.org. Excuse me. Oh, how many times have I said that right? <laughs> when it really meant <coughs> I said it wrong. <laughs> that makes no, it more no memorable now. That you <laughs> all remember org. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. No problem. All right. Well, I think then we will uh, wrap it up for today. Um, this was great. Um, we haven't had an update on the Golden Solar in a while, in a few years here. I know I looked it up. I can't remember when I told 2015, you. 2015, I think. Was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so it was great to have an update on everything, especially all the new things going on. And it's right. a conference this year. is very yes. exciting. Um, so thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you, thank you, Kathy and Sally, for being here and joining us today. Um, I'm going to go to our Encompass Live website now. Um, and so far, if you um, just Google, use your search engine of choice, Encompass Live. Um, oh, I can't believe yeah, right right but we are the only thing that's called this so far in the world on the internet. Oh, so good. luckily, um, all you'll, you know, you, whenever you type in Encompass Live online, you will find us. Um, this is our upcoming shows, but I want to show you first here for today's show. The archives will be here, uh, the archives link right underneath all the upcoming shows. The most recent ones are at the top of the page. So sometime by the end of the day, day today, I'll have the video all processed and up on here, and the slides will be linked on here as well. You can see here from last week's show, we have a link to recording and a link to presentation, but the same thing for today's show. Um, every Everyone who attended this morning and registered for today's show and was able to attend will get an email from me. Uh, we also post out to our various uh, social media. Um, we have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. We put out to Twitter, uh, mailing lists. It'll be out there for everybody. Um, while I'm here on the archives, I do want to show you. I did mention that we are in the 11th year of Encompass Live, which is a lot of shows. We do Encompass Live every, every Wednesday of the year. The only Wednesday we don't do it, which considering it, and you mentioned it, is the week of our state conference, the NLA and SLA and this year ILA conference. Um, people are just busy with conference that year. So 51 weeks a year, <laughs> um, we have a show. We have our full, all of our archives here on the site going back to the very beginning show, wow. which was in 2009. So when you are looking at our archives, just pay attention. Everything has a date, so you can see when it was originally broadcast. So just pay attention to that. You will find things on here that are um, possibly old, outdated information, services or products that don't exist anymore. Uh, things may have changed since the original broadcast of it. Um, but we are librarians. We archive things. We save things <laughs> for posterity. So um, they'll always all be up here. Just pay attention to the date when you are searching through the archives. We do have a search feature up here where you can search 
the entire archives if you want to by keyword, or if you do just want really up-to-date information, just have it search the last year's worth, the last 12 months, and it'll only do the last well, today back 12 months. Um, so that is our archives. Hope, like I said, by the end of the day today, I should have it up there. Uh, and I hope you join us for next week's show, which is How Does Your Library Garden Grow? Uh, this is a session, um, where are we at? The Beatrice Public Library has a library garden that was actually out there a month or so ago. I took a bunch of pictures, I should share, share them. Um, where they have um, letters of the alphabet in the library, in the garden, and it's for oh, reading, okay. and you can see it through the windows, and they have events and things. And so uh, Joanne Neiman, who's a youth services librarian there, will be with us along with someone from their Master Gardener program. Um, Marianne Gackle will be with us uh, next week to talk about doing the library garden programming at, at your library. So um, please do join us for that show and any of our other upcoming ones. We have all of for August one's booked. I even have things scheduled for September. I'm working on final descriptions. I can do one from you, Sally. Oh, yes. I know. I get on there. <laughs> Summer reading program session is going to be coming up in September. If you're looking at um, that, it's about the collaborative summer library program organization yes. and how things are changing. Yeah. For the good. Oh, yes. Good, in so, my opinion. So look for more things to be added. Um, and as I said, we are on Facebook. We've got a link to our Facebook page here and on each of our session pages. It looks kind of wonky on this browser. But um, so if you are a big Facebook user, do go over there and give us a like. Um, we do post reminders. Here's a reminder to log into today's show if you wanted to. When our no, I don't want to log in right now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> when we have our, our recordings are available, we I post on here. So um, if you do like to use Facebook, give us a like there, and you will um, get notifications of when we are um, doing things. A couple times a week, not too overwhelming. Let me go back. There we go. Other than that, that wraps up for today's show. Thank you, everybody, for being here, and I hope you'll join us uh, on a future Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.